Good, good afternoon, everybody. Last class, we discussed about the law of variable proportion. Then, in the three stages of production sector. And at the time, we discussed about only one input and another input is constant. Now, we discuss or study about the return to scale, where both the inputs are variable in nature. In this case, to increase the level of output, all factors are increased simultaneously, and factor proportion are held constant. And here, if the products inputs are increased, the level, all other factors Factor proportion are held constant. This is known as expansion in scale. And in this case, three phases of production are discussed: increasing returns to scale, the constant returns to scale, and diminishing returns to scale. Increasing and here, the expansion of scale confirms a number of economics or advantage on the part, both internal and external, is created. Internal economies can be divided into real economy of scale and pecuniary econ internal economies. If the scale of production is continuously expanded, a stage of internal diseconomic of scale sells in. After a certain point, increase in production is less than the proportionate increase in the factors of production. So then the in, in the case of the increasing returns scale or in internal economies, at the end, the expanded stage of internal, then expanded is called the internal economy of scale. After some time, it is come, it's after a certain point, it is come to the increase of less than production increase in the factors of production, then internal diseconomy is create. Then concept of returns to scale, returns to scale. There is, we know, now we know that there are three types of returns to scale, increasing returns to scale, constant returns to scale, and diminishing returns to scale. When output increases in a greater proportion as compared to the increase in the factors of production, this is the case of increasing returns to scale. And output increases in the same proportion as the increase in the, in the amount of the factors of production, that is constant return to scale. Output increases in smaller proportion as compared to the increase in amounts of the factors of production. This is the case of diminishing returns to scale. These, these scales are described through, a, through the schedules. There are three schedules are given in the book, book page number 177. We can see, you can see there are three schedules are given and first schedule give you the increasing returns to scale. Second one is in the constant return scale and third one the diminishing return to scale. In case of increasing return to scale, input is increased and the output is changes, output is only change, changes. But here the percentage of changes is more than the more than the input increases. At all the stages, we are increasing in the quantity of inputs by 100%. And with the increase in the quantity of inputs, the quantity of output increases by more than 100% of all stages. That means output increasing proportionality more than the increase in 
input. This is increasing return scale. Then constant return scale. Here also input is changes 100%, but the output is changes. But here output output changes percentage is constant. That is 100% in each stage. So at the time it is called as constant return scale. In case of diminishing return scale, input is changes edge. Output is changes, it changes 100%, then output is diminishes the, the, all these stages. That is first 80, then 39, then 20, 29, 20%. This is called diminishing in nature. The, the output is diminishing, diminishes further the stage. So this stage is called the diminishing return scale. Then how we present graphically the increasing return scale. When the ratio between the factors of production is kept fixed and the scale is expanded, initially output in increases in a greater proportion than the increase in the factors of production. Here in this diagram, page number 178, we see that in this, if factors are double, the output is more than double. That means to double the quantity of the output, it is necessary to double the quantity of the factors of production. This can be uh, can be explained through a di this diagram. P1, P2, P3, P4 are isoquants. They show 10, 20, 30, 40 units of output respectively. OS is the scale isoquants line, isoquist line or the scale line. Here, iso all isoports are intersect the scale line at the point A, B, C, and D. And we, in this, with the help of figure, we find that C, D is less than B, C, less than A, B, less than O, A. That means O is more than A, B, more than B, C, more than C, D. And this means that the harm to rise from isoquant P1 to P2, the amount of factors production required less than the amount required to produce the initial stage in P1 output. Similarly, to increase the output further, further 10 units so as to reach isoquant P3, the amount of factors of production required is less than the amount required to produce the earlier or initial 10 units to the output at the level of BC. This position seems to hold true till isoquant P4. There are three, three main factors which account for increasing return scale. These are some factors which affect this increasing return scale. First, indivisibility. The most important reason for of increasing returns to scale is the technical and managerial in indivisibilities. That means uh, the meaning of an indivisibility of factor of production is there. There is a certain minimum size of the factor. And even if it is large in relation to the size of the output, it has used, it has to be used. Even if only 10 to 15 letters to be dispatched from an office, it would be necessary to keep a typewriter. It is not possible to purchase only half of the typewriter. Since only a small number of letters have to be typed daily, we should therefore say that typewriter is not a divisible product. So that... Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Excuse me. Ma'am, uh, in the previous uh, schedule, how the percentage change in output is calculated in the given table? What is the formula they've used or what, is it simply mentioned like that? There must be some formula na, where uh, this is calculated. So what is that formula? Mm -hmm. It is on what is the percentage yes. change calculated? My in this table, is, only, we can only study the uh, only it can show you the percentage. It is calculated but after. There must, but there must be some uh, formula because otherwise, uh, they, if we do not find any connection, it will be 
be a useless uh, schedule. Okay. Yeah, in the case of when in increasing con con returns to scale, we see the schedule. In first two and unit X and unit four products, the input is 100. It is just suppose 100 unit and output is 1000. After that, it is double. That means 100% increase. But the output is output it in increase 3000 when it minus 3000 to 1000 then you find that 2000 is the increment in output the percentage is 200 and after we find that the real ratio double in the input change and the here the production output is 10000 when we minus it that is 7000 when you divide, you find that 233% change in the output. Okay. Yes. In this way, we calculate the percentage. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Then, in the case of increasing returns to scale, indivisibility is shown. Some factors are indivisible in nature. And because of that, there is such the individual factor of production is there. There is a certain minimum size of the factor. And even if it is large in relation to the size of output, it has, it has to be used. Example, like typewriter, if you write only 10 to 15 letter daily, because of that also we can we can buy a typewriter for the office. So that the type of writer is not divisible. Plants and managerial service in modern factories are also not divisible. For that, when the scale of production is enlarged initially, there is no equal proportionate increase in the demand for the factors of production. Then specialization, another factor which, which affect the increasing returns to scale. Chamberlain, the economist does not regard indivisibility as an important cause of increasing returns to scale. According to him, the main reason of increasing returns to scale is specialization. When due to division of labor, workers are given jobs according to their ability, their productivity increases while cost declines, and they got their work as specialized on their work. For that, the the important, according to the, the Chamberlain, specialization can affect the increasing returns scale. The importance of specialization can be acceptable only if we assume that although an increase by an equal amount of in quantity of labor and capital employed is necessary for an expansion in the scale. This increase does not, does not mean the doubling or tripling their units employed by it, employed, but it does not mean an increase in their fixed money cost, but this can lead to technical changes and it is very much possible that increasing returns enlarge, not due to an expansion in scale, but due to the technical region. So these two factors is helpful for the increasing returns to scale. Then constant returns to scale. Increasing returns to scale can be obtained only up to a point. After this point, it is reached. Expansion scale only leads to equal proportionate change in output. In, scientific, in a scientific sense, constant returns to scale implies that when the quantity of the factors of production is increased, in such a way that the ratio of the factors remains unchanged. Output increase in the same proportion in which the factors are increased. That means when the quantity of the factors is doubled, the output also doubles. Such a production function is often called a linear homogeneous production function or homogeneous production function of the first degree. This one described through a diagram, page number 180. From this isoquant, P4, P4 
three, P four, P five, and P six. We see that the, the changes of input is equal to the changes of the output. C D D E E F. All are equal in the scale line. Generally, when inefficiency of pro production on a small scale are overcome and no problems regarding technical and managing indivisibility remain, expansion on scale leads to a situation where returns increase in the same proportion as the factors of production. And at the time, we saw the constant return to scale. So, so here some economics are of the view that when benefits of specialization of a factor in the unit of production are small, or when such benefits have already been reaped at a small level of production, then for a considerable period of time, production increasing to the law of constant returns to scale. So constant returns to scale is happen after the after a certain point of increasing returns to scale. After that point, it is come to the second level that is constant return to scale. Economists have, some economists have argued that if the factors of production are perfectly divisible, the production function must exhibit constant return to scale. In their opinion, if constant return to scale does not prevail in some industry, it is because in this industry, either due to scarcity or indivisibility of some factors. It is not possible to vary all them in the same proportion. So that individuality of a factor often results in its underutilization at lower levels of, levels of output. When a producer for obtaining a larger output increases quantities of other factors, the amount of the lumpy factor which had been full which has not been fully utilized at lower levels of output will not be in so that the constant returns to scale is can be increased or decreased by increasing or decreasing, decreasing the amounts of the factors in the optimum proportion with, without any economies or this economies of a scale which means that constant returns to scale will necessarily prevail. Anyhow, constant returns to scale can be shown in any plant, any productive sectors. Then diminishing returns to scale. Diminishing returns to scale means the in, in that means the when the quantity of the factors of production is increased in such a way that the proportion of the factors remains unchanged, then output increases a smaller proportion than the compared to the increase in the amount of the factors of production. As more and more factors of production can be can be used for the production production purpose, then the output is not increased increase as much as the use of the uh, is, is the initial stage of the production. For example, it may happen that an increase in amount of labor and capital by 100 percent leads to an increase in the output by only 75 percent. That means if output has to be double, the factors of production will have to be more than double. We can understand this phenomena with the help of diagram. When the farm is at I second 6, the tendency of constant returns to scale has come to an end. That time, constant returns to scale come to an end. That time, from here, the increasing distance between two consecutive isoquants in an indication that to, to obtain the same increase in output, their factors of production will have to, to be increased at higher and higher rate. On the scale line o, OS, IG is more than IH is more than more than a GH and a G. It indicates the phenomenon explicitly. That means the, the here the use of the input output input is more than the output. Output we derive is smaller. This is the diminishing.
sectors have some economists emphasize that enterprise is a constant and indivisible factor of production its supply cannot be increased even in the long run accordingly when the quantity of other factors is increased and the scale of production expanded in a bid in that case the pro the production of other factors in a, in relation to enterprises increases beyond a certain point the, this results in diminishing returns to enterprise because scarcity in relation to other factors so scarcity also a cause scarcity of factors also cause the diminishing diminishing returns to scale then managerial difficulties according to some economists the main reason for the operation of diminishing returns to scale is managerial difficulties when the scale of production expands the coordination and control on different factors of production tend to become weak and therefore output tends to increase in the same proportion as the factors factors of production increases because for that the diminishing returns to scale is so so diminishing returns to scale is also found in every factory, every production sector after some time after the period of constant returns to scale after doubling if the doubling of the input used in the production the output is got output got is very less so in the case of diminishing returns to scale because of the enterprise and managerial difficulties then what is economics and this economics of scale here economics that were obtained in production work market marketing management transport etc are in real terms while economics that are obtained in terms purchase of inputs at wholesale rate availability of finance at lower rate of interest saving on advertising cost are in money terms then there are certain economies that do not equate to the firm to scale up operation in large but equate to certain other firms which benefit from the large scale of the firm in economics those economies which equate to a firm and on expansion of its own size are known as internal economics as those economies which equate to a firm not due to its own operation but due to the operations of other firms are termed external economies then internal economies of scale generally when the scale of production is is to be enlarged the firm replaces its small plant by a larger plant this increases the efficiency of production it is not always necessary to change the plant for expanding the scale of production the firm can keep the old plant in running condition and either establish a new plant of the same type or a new plant of some new type in all these alternatives the firm offers very many different kinds of economics these economics are production economics production economics selling and or marketing economics managerial economics or and economic in transport and storage production economics when the scale of production expands a number of economics equate to the firm in the production process itself has opportunity for obtaining various types of economics emerge in the workshop of the factory production on a large scale enables the firm to carry out extensive division of labor and empty large automatic machines the capacity of the machines is also fully used on account of the large volume of production instead instead of depending on others for carrying out repairs of machines and machine tools the firm can itself employ technicians workmen for the purpose techniques of production are changing so rapidly in the modern world that every product has to remain remaining changeable large size of the farm and large scale of operation is better in this regard since larger firm can easily make use of its big financial resources 
researchers to conduct research in the laboratory and adopt technology discoveries elsewhere to suit its own requirements. So that in the in large scale, if the scale of operation is small, a relatively larger quantity of this material goes unutilized. However, if the scale of operation is large, some useful goods can be prepared even from the waste material. For example, from the syrup left out in the sugar factory, liquid can be prepared. Like in Bengal's factory, a number of small glass goods can be prepared out of the broken Bengals. When the scale of production is small, the producer generally cannot afford a packing department. Therefore, he has to depend on others for obtaining packaging in material like boxes, labels, etc. This leads to a substantial expenditure on packaging. However, if the scale of production is large, the farm can set up its own packaging department, which is economical and also leads to lower per unit packaging cost. So that when farm is in large, then it create it can it can create production economies like that. Selling or marketing economies also are created by large plant. Every producer produce it with one purpose that is selling. Therefore, he has to incur some expenditure in making his goods available to consumer. For that, when the scale of production is large, the Per unit expenditure of the producer on marketing of goods is reduced due to a number of reasons. First, all farms advertise their products in a number of ways. Even very small farms also spend a certain minimum amount on advertising. So, the large farms, the per unit of cost of the large farms is smaller due to the fact that advertising cost is not required to be increased proportionately as the volume of production increases. When the scale of production is large, the farm can economic, economize on the expenditure on salesmen agents. The large farms can also enter into such contracts with the wholesalers and the distributors that they take more interest in selling the products of the farm. Naturally, a small farm is deprived of this benefit. So, large pen, farm can got this type of benefits from, from its production. And because of that, selling or marketing economy is easy for him. Then, managerial economies. Managerial economies costs are partly production costs and parts, partly selling post. Manager, managerial economies are obtained on account of the following two basic reasons. Be, first, benefits of specialization in the field of management can be obtained only when the scale of operation is considerably large. When the scale of production is small, all managerial responsibilities regarding production, marketing, finance, will have to be borne by one person only. As, as the scale of operation expands, separate managers are appointed to look after these tasks. These raises the level and quality of management. And also, cost does not increase in proportion to the increase in the scale of operation. Large firms are in a position to use a number of machines for purpose of management. The use of computers, telephone, text, etc. can be made only by a sufficiently large farm. If small farms are used these machines, the total cost incurred on them would be very much high in, higher in relation to the level of production attained. So, the economists not in complete agreement on the managerial economies. Some economists argue that with the expansion of scale, managerial economies are obtained only up to a limit. After this limit, cost on management increase in a greater proportion. This is due to two reasons. First, the managerial structure in large companies is bureaucratic. And when the scale of production expands, delays in decision making creep in. This weakness managerial efficiency. Secondly, the degree of uncertainty increases as the size of the farm increases. On account of this region, 
various difficulties have to be encountered in decision making leading to an increase in managerial cost then fourth factor is economies in transparent storage when the scale of production expand economies in transport and storage equate to the farm small farms have usually to depend on public transport and therefore they are per unit transport cost is higher as the scale of operation expands the farm can purchase its own truck lorry etc this will reduce the per unit transport cost for the farm if the scale of operation expands still further the farm can go in for larger trucks and lorries this the railways also give siding facility to large producers and this reduces their lodging cost in reality the transport cost is partly production cost and partly selling and marketing cost when the farm purchases raw material the load loading cost is going to the the production cost on the other hand when finished goods are transported to the market it is part of selling and marketing cost so like transport cost storage cost are also partly production cost and partly selling and marketing cost for example expenditure on storing the raw material is a production cost whereas expenditure on finished and semi finished goods is a part of marketing cost from this point the size of the warehouse an important thing to remember in that larger the size of the warehouse larger will be the economics according to the farm the the reason is that the cost of construction of the warehouse does not increase in the same proportion as the increase in the storage capacity of the warehouse so that this these are the some real internal economies of the scale when the farm is large and some pecuniary internal economy is shown that is has a large size farm can ask the suppliers of raw materials to give specific concession and discounts no raw material supplier usually ignores such request of the large farm secondly perfect completion generally does not prevail in the capital market since the large companies have greater goodwill in the capital market because of they they can be they can be offer bench to uh, for the loans at lower rates of interest then transport companies companies are also willing to provide discounts and concession if if it is substantially large this enables the farm to obtain monetary economy in transport costs by expanding its scale of operation when production is large the farm is required to spend a large amount on advertising as well however advertising on large scale attracts discounts and concessions from the media in which the advertising may appear so that these are some pecuniary internal economies of scale when the farm is large and besides this there is some internal this economy of scale is shown and this this economies cannot be seen or not physical if the scale of production is continuously expanded as it possible that after a certain point increase in production is less than proportionate then increase in the factors of production so because of this at the point so so internal this economy is so fast limitation on the availability of factors of production we know that the factors of production scarce in nature when the scale of production is increased after a certain point it no longer remains possible to meet the requirements of some factors from local sources for that factors to be transported from other regions this is generally possible on a higher basis and due to the the due to the large scale large plant what happen the they are the factors of production are not available in the local market because of that they are can they can be transported from other regions for which it can be it only available at a high prices
and it will at the scale of production expands it will become more and more difficult to get even the labor from local sources and after a certain point workers will have to be attracted from other regions by offering them higher wages so that it is very these are to these are disrupting nature of the factors of production labor and raw material cannot be available on the locality to transport or to to attract the labor labor also the producer offering higher wages and at the case of uh, at the case of the on the case of the raw materials it can pay higher prices and also there is one other internal discipline is problems in management when the scale of production is very large the task of management at the top level becomes increasingly more and more uh, burdensome and some inefficiency is bound to creep in at times information vital for taking decision do not reach the top managers of the company in time this delay leads to a delay in decision making and for that increase in the per unit cost then technical factors when the scale of production is expanded per unit cost increases due to a number of technical reasons the establishment cost of large and sophisticated plants and machinery generally high the buildings of large factories should not should also have stronger foundation and the factory itself must be equipped with coolers air condition extra all these factors lead to an increase in power unit cost these are some internal discrepancies of the scale then external economics external economics fastly described by alfred marshall according to him when a farm enters production it obtains a number of economies for which the farm's own production strategy managerial arrangements extra are extra are not responsible in fact these are economic external to the farm for example suppose that a farm is established at a place where transport advertising facility is not available if the size of the farm remains small it is possible that these facilities are not locally available in the future as well as however if the size of the farm increases significantly these facilities will themselves start coming to the farm these are external economic when a farm expands its scale of production other farms also earn many economies for example when a large factory attracts various factors of production fairly regularly many other factories set up in the neighborhood that could not have attracted these factors on their own also stand to gain they obtain these factors at practic practically the same prices at which the large factory obtain them because of external economies of large scale production there is a gap between private and social returns when a farm expands its scale of production it becomes possible for the other farms to reduce their cost of production so however there is no method available in the prevalent price mechanism to the farm expanding its scale of operation to charge for the benefits it confers on the other farms so external economy is also created through the large plants in case of the small farm a small scale these economic external economies cannot be solved then external diseconomies when the scale of operation is expanded many such diseconomies economies that have no particular real effect of the farm itself but their burden falls on the so on the other farms they are termed external diseconomy the smoke rising from the chimney of a factory pollutes the atmosphere when the farm is is of a small size the pollution is less and its ill effects on the people living in colony nearby is limited 
but in if the scale of the fan is large the smoke will be very dense and can cause serious health hazards to the people similarly as the scale of production of the factory increases employment rises sharply this creates problems of traffic congestions and overcrowding in the city where these factories are located in agriculture industry in the scale of production leads to problem of soil erosion and this reduces the fertility of of the fields so then the large scale not only creates economics internal economies or external economies but also it create this economics of scale uh, external this economics and external this internal this economics which affect the affect the society and also the internal sector of the farm after that we here we now learn this eco artich there is increasing return scale constant return scale diminishing return scale and the economy what are the internal economy and external economies then we come to another thing that is cost of production how the cost of production is calculated then the concept of costs prop the decision of farm regarding production of a good depends on two factors the demand for the good and the, the cost of, of production of the good these two factors are helpful for the producer to decide the product which thing can be which thing he produce and how much and how much then a price taker farm wishes to maximize its profits will be able to do so if it is able to minimize its cost obviously a farm is interested in minimizing what economists call the private cost the concept of social cost that is being open referred to in the context of social welfare is not relevant for the theory of farm in the the concept of money cost may be interpreted from the point of view of an accountant or an economist so it is in economic analysis we often distinguish between money cost and opportunity cost from analytical point of view both the concepts are relevant and that must be understood carefully in the short run since we have some fixed inputs and some other inputs are variable one that the distinction between the fixed cost and variable cost can be can be different however in the long run because the amounts of all the inputs can be varied all costs are considered together the theory of cost attempt to explain as to how cost changes occur in response to changes in the size of production in large in long run the all things are variable in nature so it is so, so that the cost changes depend on the the productions depend on the morely production sector then concept of cost private cost and social cost in microeconomic theory the concepts of both private cost and social cost are used in the farm in its attempt to attain the goal of profit maximization is guided entirely by the private cost private cost in its decision making it ignores all the cost which it may be imposing on others while carrying out its production program however in welfare study together with the has both explicit and implicit cost all such costs are taken into account which are external to the narrow economy then private costs every every farm requires various inputs to produce a good to in the amount of money so paid is known as cost economists however include in the private cost not only the expenditure incurred by the producer on purchasing of factors of production from the market but also the imputed cost of all the services which the producer himself provide here in the small farm 
private cost is calculated both the cost of the factors of production and also what the what is provided by the producer the services provided provided by provided by the producer himself that cost is also calculated the private cost of production of any output may thus be defined as either the purchase of the imputed value of all productive services used in producing the output output generally economists economists they are calculate at the cost for the they, this cost as cost of the raw materials wages of the laborers interest payments on the capital loans rent on the of the land and the buildings repairing cost of machines and depreciation tax payments to the government and local bodies imputed wage payment to the producer for the work performed performed by himself imputed interest payment for the capital invested by the pro producer himself rent of land and buildings owned by the producer himself and normal profits of the farm these things are calculated in the case of the private cost so this so that three types of expenditure are included in the private cost has the purchase price of the factors of production employed in the production process second imputed price of the resources provided by the producer himself had normal profits then social cost the social cost is different from private cost because of two reasons first externalities are not included in private cost for example a factory located in the, located in the residential area by polluting the atmosphere will expose the residents of the colony to various elements and will thereby raise their medical expenditure those the these costs are quite relevant from the point of view of the society they will never be considered by the farm as part of its cost secondly market prices of goods may not reflect their social value and thus there may be divergence between private and social cost the imposition of government taxes subsidies and controls of various kinds of distress free market prices prices of factors of production may overstate or understate the opportunity cost of using those factors in heavily populated countries where widespread discharge and unemployment to be found in the agriculture sector the industrial wage often exceeds the opportunity cost of the labor which is drawn from the agriculture sector in computing the social cost adjusted market prices for goods and factors of production are used while the adjusted prices for factors of production are called shadow prices the adjusted prices of goods are termed as social cost then these two social two costs are not calculated in the private cost then money cost the money cost of production of any output is considered to be equivalent to the total monetary sacrifice made to the obtained output the costs not are not sacrificed alternately but monetary payments from the point of view of the economics the concept of cost is not very relevant since economists wish to study as to how cost affect output choices employed the employment decisions and the like cost should include imputed value of all expenses all the inputs provi provided by the producer himself in addition to outright money expenses so cost can be classified as ex explicit cost and implicit cost ex explicit cost arises from transaction between the farm and other parties in which the farmer purchases inputs or services of inputs of for carrying out the production these costs are usually the cost shown in the accounting statements and include wage payments raw material costs interest on loans payments for insurance electricity and so on 
but implicit costs are the cost associated with the use of the firm's own resources since these resources will be bring return if employed elsewhere they are imputed values constitute the implicit costs implicit costs are however difficult to measure economics no not the less asset that they must be taken into account in analyzing the activities of a firm so implicit cost is very difficult to measure so in monica cost both these cost are calculated implicit and explicit cost are calculated then the real cost the real cost also developed by the marshal in his opinion a worker suffers discomfort while the render his services for productive purposes similarly a person makes some sacrifice when he saves his income and lends to it to investor who use it for carrying out production these discomforts and sacrifices are in the nature of real cost of production the concept of real cost however based on subjectivity and cannot be used for precise measurement of production cost it is this reason why modern economists do not consider it to be much relevant in the price theory they admit that most of the labor involves hard work and is definitely unpleasant therefore in contrast the real cost of simple and less work is generally low but this fact is not at all relevant from the point of view of price determination in a free enterprise economy moreover to modern economies saving do not involve any sacrifice in case of the modern economists they according to them saving is not a sacrifice these economists regard the concept of real cost as inappropriate but marshall said that the this when the worker suffers discomfort and sacrifices that time the real cost is arise then some cost and inter incremental cost in economics a business this business decision making a some cost is a cost that has already been incurred and cannot be recovered some cost are sometimes constructed with the prospective cost which are future cost that may be incurred or, or change if an action is taken in in microeconomic theory only prospective or future cost are relevant for decision making since some cost have already been incurred they cannot be recovered therefore they should not influence the rational decision makers choice an incremental cost is the increase in total cost resulting from an increase in the production or other activity if a company's total cost increase from rupees 5.6 lakh to rupees 6 lakh as a result of increasing its machine hours from 7000 to 10 8000 the incremental cost of the 1000 machine hour is equal to 40000 rupees so in the case of the some cost it is a it is described by the modern economist where as marshall cannot calculate this type of cost then economic cost and accounting cost the economics and account accountants view cost from different angles accountants are concerned with the firm's financial statement and tend to make the retrospective retrospective at the firm's finance because they have to keep track of assets and liabilities uh, accounting cost includes depreciation depreciation expenses for capital equipment at rates allowed by the tax authorities but economics on the other hand are concerned with what cost is expected to be in the future and with how the firm might be able to rearrange its resources to lower its cost and and improve its profitability thus they take a forward looking view and must there therefore be considered the opportunity cost so the accounting accounting cost accounting cost is 
because they give the accountants and they are recording in the throat liability and assets. Whereas the economics are calculate economic cost, which is the which is based on the future forecasting. Future production that they take forward looking and they therefore they conserve their with opportunity course. Then the economists and the economists consider exploitative costs because they involve direct payments by a company to other firms and in, individuals that it does business with. However, while economists also take into account the implicit force, accounts ignore them. For example, consider the owner of a resale store who manages his own resale store but does not pay any salary to himself. Since no monetary transaction has taken place, but accountant will not include it in the accounting cost. However, the economist will include this implicit cost in total cost as the risk resale store owner could have earned a competitive salary by working elsewhere. The, this type, when estimating the future profitability of a business, an economist is concerned with the capital cost of plant and machinery. This involves not only the explicit cost of buying and the running of the machinery, but also the cost associated with the wear and tear. But accounts is appreciation rates on different assets as allowed under the tax laws in their cost and profit calculations. So that according to the calculation of profit will also differ. For them, consider a resale store owner has invested rupees one lakh as equity in a store in inventory. His monthly sales revenue is two thousand two lakh sixty. After deduction of cost of goods sold, salaries of hired labor and depreciation of equipment and buildings, the accounting profit to the store owner is 25,000. And in the in other schedule, the economic statement of profit of the same store is how the cost of goods sold and salary, salary remain the same. Let us suppose that the market value of the equipment and building in fact, the, in fact 25,000 over the current year and the depreciation charge reflects the opportunity cost of these resources. The depreciation expense is taken to be 25,000. However, the economist will add two items relating the implicit cost in the cost of production. Suppose that the owner manager could earn 25,000 per month as a departmental manager in a large store and that this is the best opportunity for salary. Then we would add rupees 25 as the imputed salary of the owner manager to the cost of production. Similarly, the owner manager has rupees 1 lakh equity in the store and inventory, a sum he could have easily invested elsewhere. Let us suppose that he could have earned 10% interest on his on this amount had the investor it elsewhere. Thus, imputed interest cost on equity will be 10,000. When the total economic cost or the opportunity cost of all resources used in the production this process will add up, we find that 270,000. This implies an economic loss of 11 to the owner manager of the store against the accounting profit of rupees 25 in the first accountant case. So this, the, the differences in the calculation of profits by the economists and the accountants. It is also important to point out that while for economists, profit and losses are the driving force. Business accounting does not stop here. Business accounts also include the balance sheet which is a picture of financial condition on a particular day. On one side of the balance sheet are recorded assets and the other sides are liability and, and net worth. A balance sheet must always be balanced because net worth is a residual defined assets 
minus valuable assets minus liabilities. So the income statement states shows the flow of sales, post, and revenue over the period period or accounting period. It measures the flow of money into and out of the firm over a specific period of time. The balance sheet indicates an instant instant annual financial picture. It is like measure of the stock of water in a day. The major items are assets and liabilities and net worth. So that in economic cost, cost and accounting cost, they are calculated differently. Here, accounting cost. In first case, we find that it, the reseller, reseller store is acquiring 25,000 profit. But in case of economic cost, economic, when counting the economic cost, then we find that the reseller store is, resell store owner is loss in 10,000. So that there is a difference between economic cost and accounting cost. Then historical cost and replacement cost. The historical cost is the cost that was actually incurred at the time of the purchase of an asset. But the replacement cost is the cost that will have no be that have to be incurred now to replace that asset. These two costs differ because of changes in prices over a period of time. Naturally, if prices remain unchanged over time, both the cost will be the same. But this seldom, but it is rarely happens. Accordingly, historical cost and replacement cost of an asset always differ. If the price rises over a period of time, replacement cost will be higher than the historical cost. On on the other hand, if the price of the asset declines over a period of time, replacement cost will be lower than the historical cost. Because of the requirements of tax laws and the laws of governing financial reporting to shareholders, accounts generally express many costs in terms of the actual or historic cost paid for the resources used in the production process in accordance with the convention of financial accounts. So, it, in the case for the decision making purposes, it is not the historical cost is important, but the replacement cost is very important. This is due to the reason that for all decision making purposes, it is the current cost that is important, important, and not and that and not the cost that was influenced so many years earlier. So, in historical cost, it is a previous period's cost, and which is which is constant in nature. But replacement cost is a current cost. Then, cost concern. We know that there is the relations between production, product, and cost is known as cost concern. There are two elements in determining the cost concern. The first, the production of the farm, and secondly, the prices where they paid the farm by the for the factors of use. So, at times, one factor of production in the short run, one factor of production is variable, and other factors are fixed. On account of this region, cost person can also be of various types. In economics, generally, two types of cost person are considered. The one is the short run cost function and another is the long run cost function. Cost function, the, to understand the theory of cost, it is necessary to be clear about the meaning of short run and long run. In common sense, common uses, the term may be used for weeks, months, and years, but for the economists, they indicate conditions of production and have no reference to the calendar year. So that generally, economists regard that period of time as short run, in which some factors of production are fixed, and the farm depends only on, only on the variable factors of production to increase the level of output. If the farm does not employ the variable factors at all, the output will be zero in the short run. 
However, the maximum quantity of output that can be produced depends upon the quantity of the fixed factors of production. In the long run, all factors are variable and the quantity of the output can be increased at any limit. And for example, in a manufacturing industry, the plants, machinery, buildings, a factory, etc. are fixed resources in the short run, while the raw materials, labor, power, etc. are variable. Therefore, to increase the amount of output in this period, it will become necessary to employ more units of the variable resources than the fixed resources. The maximum output, output that can be obtained in this period will depend to a great extent upon to the total quantity of the fixed resources of production. And the long run cost concern. In the long run, total cost is a multivariable concern which implies that total cost is determined by many factors. The long run cost concern may be C equal to function of Q, T, P and C is the total cost production, Q output, T technology, P is the price of sales of relevant factors production. But the, the long run cost function is on two dimensional diagram as C equal to a function of Q. With the assumption that the technology and the prices of reliable factors of production remains constant. Then short run cost function. In the short run, the, uh, the addition to out level, output level, technology and factor prices, the fixed prices, fixed factors cap such as capital equipment, land, etc. also determine cost of production. Therefore, the short run cost function is written as C equal to function of Q, T, P, F and K. K indicates fixed factor. In this, on the production function, it has been stated that in the short run, certain factors like capital equipment, land, factory building and top managerial staff remains constant. Since the amount of fixed factors do not change in the short run, under any circumstance, K is not shift factor like technology and factor prices. And theory of cost in the short run. So, in the the short run cost of a farm is divided in in the into fixed and variable cost. So, total cost equal to TFC plus TBC. TFC total fixed cost plus total variable cost. What is fixed cost? Fixed cost is also known as supplementary cost. The this is known as fixed cost of production. Interest per then while in engaging in productive activity, the producer always has to incur some expenditure which remain fixed. Whatever the level of production is not important, but at the initial period, the expenditure is remain fixed. So much so that even if the producer stops production, these costs have to be incurred. This is fixed known as fixed cost. Interest paid by the producer on the capital borrowed or for purchasing plant and machinery, rent for factory building, depreciation of the machinery, the ages of foremen and organizers, extra are all fixed costs. These costs remain fixed even when the level of output is varied. Even if the producer decides to close down production, it has to bear this course since the factory factory rent wages of manager interest on capital extra have to be paid so then the it is clear from that larger the level of production in a farm the, the lower will be the per unit fixed cost then variable cost the cost which keeps on changing with the changes in the quantity of the output produced is known as variable cost for raw material has to be used in the process of production in a manufacturing industry. Labor has to be employed for running machines and energy has to be arranged. These are variable costs. Generally, expenditure on these inputs increases or decreases due to changes in the level of production. 
it is important to remember in this context that when the producer producer production in the in the short run this cost also vanishes completely in fact it is due to this direct relationship between expenditure on such inputs and the level of production that this expenditure as known as variable cost in this in the page number 196 the schedule is seen here is see that input output unit then total fixed cost total variable cost then total cost when there is output is zero in zero and the variable cost engaged in the production sector zero besides this total fixed cost is to 40 total variable cost 120 and that time the output is one that time also the total cost increase to 360 Total fixed cost plus total variable cost can count the total cost. Like this, when 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 this output increases, when total variable cost increases, that time the output also increases, and also total cost also increases. Then total fixed cost. From this table, total variable cost. If you draw a diagram, diagram, then you find that, then find total variable cost is farm's total expenditure on variable inputs used to carry out production. And in this page number one ninety nine, the above upper diagram is shown the total variable cost. in the diagram the us that the total variable cost the farm increases as it outputs increases however when the farm stop its production all together it does not require any variable input and therefore its total variable cost is zero in the farm total variable cost function is shown in this in this diagram then pbc initial initially it it rises sharply then there is a moderation and its rate of rise and ultimately it resumes rising at a faster level and it is it is upward sloping curve then total fixed cost total fixed cost of is the total expenditure by the farm on the fixed inputs it is constant it and for that it is 200 rupee to 240 it's constant throughout the production output varies from 1 unit to 6 unit but the total fixed cost remains constant in 240 even when the farm stops production altogether implying that output is at zero level but besides the besides this total fixed cost is remains unchanged the farm's total fixed cost function is is like a horizontal curve which is parallel to o x axis and total cost total cost is, is nothing but the sum of the total fixed cost and total variable cost so then to thus thus to obtain the farm's total cost at a given output we have only to add the total fixed cost and its total variable cost the result is shown in this that 199 page below diagram is shown the total cost first total cost function is since the total cost function and the total variable function function differ by only the amount of total fixed cost which is constant they have the same set first we there if there is no zero production zero unit of production besides this the cost total cost the fixed cost is arise due to this the total cost is the case is the 240 after that the when the in, increasing increment in inputs can the or total variable increase in total variable cost increase the output also that time the total cost in increasing so the total cost is run like this in one graph one diagram page number 200 we see a total all the cost total fixed cost 
concern total variable cost concern and total cost concern can be drawn and cost concern when they graphically present here tfc is the total fixed cost curve since it is parallel to x axis it indicates that whatever whatever be the level or output the total fixed cost remains the same it does not change in response to a change in the level of production tc is the total cost curve it indicates the sum of total fixed cost and total variable cost for the various output levels if the level of production is to be raised the use of variable inputs will have to be increased and this will push up the cost the rising total cost curve tc from left to right indicates this fact the vertical distance between the total cost curve tc and the total fixed cost curve tfc indicates indicates total variable cost if for example if the farm wishes to produce oq units of output the total variable cost will be gq minus mq equal to gm and if the level of output is or the total variable cost will be hr minus nr equal to hn the total variable cost has been depicted by the curve pvc this is the parallel to the total cost curve in tc and the vertical distance between the two curves indicates total fixed cost then short term cost curves it is necessary for to understand the concept of average fixed cost average variable cost and average total cost average fixed cost generally all those firms whose total cost of production include a significant proportion of fixed cost try to increase the level of production to such an extent that per per unit fixed cost which is often known as average fixed cost is reduced substantially to find out the average fixed cost total fixed cost had to be divided by the output so afc equal to tfc by q total fixed cost by quantity of output a <coughs> this total average fixed cost can be drawn with a diagram in this diagram the average fixed cost declines with a rise in the level of output when the farm produces only one unit average fixed cost is 240 as the output is output is expanded there is a decline in the average fixed cost and it is low rupees 40 a 40 when 6 units of 6 units of the commodity are produced that that average fixed cost must decline with increases in output output in this figure when output is 1 you need the average fixed cost is 240 when the output is increased to 3 in this and then 6 units average fixed cost declines from 80 to 40 so that the average fixed cost curve is a rectangular rectangular hyperbole because multiplication of average fixed cost with the quantity of output produced always always a fixed value then average variable cost average to obtain the average variable cost then the we divide the total variable cost by the output abc equal to tbc minus q abc by q the average variable cost gives us the same information in money terms that we obtain from a, a the average product curve of the variable factor in physical terms with an increase in the amount of variable factor the efficiency in production increases and the average variable cost declines if average productivity remains constant average variable cost will also remains constant if it declines average variable cost cost also decline the the relationship between average variable factor productivity and average cost it is easy to understand the nature of the abc curve then average total cost 
average total cost is other than non otherwise known as average cost pc total cost divided by the output is we obtain the average cost and pc equal to tx plus tv tbf the modern economists are generally agreed that in all areas of economic activity average total cost declines initially Re the reasons are the same which lead to increasing returns in the initial stage average cost declines initially because some of the resources are indivisible indivisible and there are the possibilities of specialization in the production process as long as the indivisible factors are not fully utilized the average total cost falls when expansion in output leads to a stage where the where the indivisible resources are fully utilized an optimum proportion is established between the factors of production if the output is expanded beyond the point by increasing the amount of variable inputs then total production production increases at a diminishing rate this leads to a rise in average total cost this shows why the average total cost curve is you so you say we can understand the set of average total cost curve atc better with the help of average variable cost curve abc and average fixed cost curve afc afc in the diagram 10.8 to touch page number 204 the atc curve is obtained by vertically summing up the abc and afc curve when both abc and afc curve slopes up downward the atc curve also slopes downward the point r on the abc curve shows the minimum average variable cost after this point the average variable cost starts increasing and that the abc curve is sloping upward however the fall in the average fixed cost more than compensates for the rise in average variable cost so the atc curve slopes downward since at point t on the abc curve the rate of increase of the average variable cost is the same as the rate of which the average fixed cost falls corresponding to the level of output average total cost is minimum at this output level so there therefore the atc curve slopes upward marginal cost marginal cost is the increase in the total cost owing to small increase in output marginal cost equal to delta tc by delta q that means change in total cost by change in quantity it can be understood through a schedule in this schedule we see that that total cost and the total variable cost and marginal cost here the total cost of producing two units of output is rupees 400 and the total cost of producing 2 plus 3 we need the then units of output rupees 420 and therefore marginal cost is rupees 20 which is 420 minus 400 the total cost is is 400 first total when total cost is 400 then total variable cost is 160 that time marginal cost is 40 then since fixed cost remains unchanged in the short run marginal cost can also be defined as increase in the total variable cost consequently upon a small increase in output the marginal cost that will be rupees derived through the total cost minus total variable cost but then you save this the marginal cost is you save this implies that the marginal cost curve mc fast slopes downward and then at the point where marginal cost is minimum it starts sloping upward because marginal cost after decreasing it increases in output at low output levels and increases with further increases in output the shape of marginal cost curve is curve is in fact attributable to the law of variable proportion 
according to the law of variable proportion the marginal product of the variable input rises at low output levels and then falls with the expansion in output so the marginal cost curve will first fall then rise there, there are two important points are there the mc curve reaches its minimum point before the apc and abc curves reach and when the mc curve rises it cuts the abc and apc curves at their minimum points then relations between marginal cost and average cost there is close relationship between the marginal cost curve and the average total average total cost and average variable cost curve when the mc curve is below the ac curve which means marginal cost is less than less than average cost the latter it falls when the mc curve is above the ac curve which means marginal cost uh, cost is more than the average cost the latter rises the mc curve intersect the ac curve at, a, at its minimum point and in the diagram we see this thing the relationship between apc curve and the mc curve is each shown here the region for the above because the relation between the mc curve and the apc curve is simple so long as the mc curve lies below the apc curve it pulls the latter downwards when the mc curve rises above the apc curve it pulls the latter upward so that marginal cost and average cost are equal where the mc curve intersect the apc curve thus it is natural that the mc curve intersect the apc curve at its minimum point and another important feature of the relationship between mc and ac curve is that mc is affected only by variable cost fixed cost do not affect marginal cost then long run cost curves long run long run all factors are variable due to absence of fixed factors in the production function all costs all costs of production are variable in the long run and therefore there is no need to distinguish between fixed and variable cost all factors have to be increased and this results in an expansion of scale in the that farmers according to the surplus it can be choose any plant out of the large and small plants available to it let us suppose that a farm has three options are corresponding to them the short run average total cost curves are has given in the figure page 209 there is two three plants short run plants we shall call the smallest plant a the medium size plant b and largest and the medium size b and the large size plant c the short run average total cost curves are asatc a asatc b and asatc c if the demand is small the farm will use plant a for the purpose of production but in doing so it will have to incur a higher average total cost if the farm has to produce o q to a quantity of output it has two option of upon before before then this optimum level of output that can be produced with the help of this plant or uh, is it set oqt secondly it can opt for plant b it if it does so the capacity of plant b will not be fully utilized nevertheless per unit cost of production will be lower than the cost of production production the farm will have to incur if it's opted for producing oqt amount of output with the help of plant a so in theoretically speaking theoretically the long run average cost lc curve touches the short run average total cost curves on their minimum points it is due to the fact that initially increasing return to scale and after some, some time diminishing return to scale prevail in the production process that the lc curve touches the lowest satc curve at its minimum point in the phase of increasing return to scale when average total cost of falling the lc curve touches ascetic curve to the left of the minimum points of ascetic 
curves and in the phase of diminishing curve returns towards the right of minimum points of these curves the curve lse tops satcb curve at the, its minimum point k the satc a curve to, towards the left of its minimum point and the satc c is the right of its minimum point so long period the behavior of the farm which does harm to efficient in the short run may be found to be inefficient in the long run so if due to an increase in the demand the farm wishes to increase output by q1 q2 plant cannot be changed in the short run and only variable will be increased that the farm will advance on the curve satc1 as a result the efficiency of the variable research will improve and per unit production will decline from bq1 to jq2 in the short run the level of efficiency cannot improve further because this is the optimum level of production that can be achieved with the help of the plant available of the farm so in the long run produce the level of output oq2 the use of plant of such a small size is inefficient if the farm uses a plant of larger size it will benefit from the increasing returns returns that would that would be become available when an expansion in scale leads to diseconomies on or diminishing returns to scale I mean, it will be it will be in the interest of the farm to reduce the level of production the farm can cut down production by q3 q4 in the short run and this will enable it to reduce the average total cost from dq4 to mq3 this will result in optimum use of the plant however in the long run this position will not be satisfactory as the farm can reduce the average cost to the level of mq3 since nq3 is less than nq3 the position which was optimum for the farm in the short run becomes inefficient in the long run it is clear that when the farm uses plant a, of a relatively small size it produces output much larger than in technologically optimum yet the cost remains low because it becomes possible to reduce the this economies of the large plant long run average cost the long run average cost can be assumed to be used say the shape of the long run average cost curve is based on the assumption that ultimately the tendency of diminishing returns operates in the production process in this belief of the economics it's correct that every producer wishes to maximize profits and conditions of production are perfectly competitive then it is true that lsc car must ultimately rise to rise to the right then and marginal cost curve long run marginal cost the change in total cons consequently upon a small change in total output when the farm has simple time to accomplish the output changes by making the appropriate adjustment in the quantity of all resources used including those those that constitute in its plan as far as the relationship between the long run marginal cost curve and long run average cost curve is concerned it is precisely the same as exists between the short run marginal cost curve and the short run average total cost curve then relationship between long run marginal cost and short run marginal cost when to produce a certain given level of, level of output farm sets up the most efficient plan its short run marginal cost becomes equal to its long run marginal cost it can be explained on the and the 2 212 page number diagram in this diagram the given quantity of output is oq1 this output can be produced at lowest unit cost with the help of a plant a the short run average cost curve of the farm when it produces with the help of a plant a is given by ssc short run average cost curve corresponds to other plants have not been drawn so to find out why smc and lmc must be equal at the level of output of q1 
let us consider the implication of small change in the output by small amount let us take the level of output o q2 at this output level short run average cost will be greater than long run average cost in other words short run total cost is greater than long run total cost when output rises from the level o q2 the level of o q1 the short run total cost becomes equal to the the long run total cost if the level of output is raised to o q3 then since ss is greater than lsc at this output stc will also be greater than ltc in other words when output level is raised beyond o q1 we find that smc exceeds lmc actually as we move from o q2 to o q1 we find that rate of decline in smc is decline declining in fact beyond o q1 it stand rising on the other hand lmc keeps falling over the entire range therefore between o q1 and o q3 ss is rising and ls is falling so the equality of short run marginal cost and the long run marginal cost is very significant for a farm if the farm has to increase the level of output only by a very small amount of whether it continues to employ the existing plant changes only the quantity of the variable resources resources or make a small change in the size of the plant these results are the same therefore from the point of view of the farm both the methods are equally correct for that whenever the ssc at the time ssc and lmc are equal that output is the a equilibrium out for put for a farm so any doubt here Any questions?
what is increasing the returns to scale and which factors are affect the increasing returns to scale page number 178 probable question then short note constant returns to scale and distance between economies and diseconomies of scale long question page number 182 then short note private costs real costs and distinction between economic cost and accounting cost short note short run cost function and what is variable cost in the short run then short note the diagrammatically represents of total fixed cost what is average variable cost in the short run then relationship between marginal cost and average cost in the short run page number 206 and it's short question then long run long run marginal cost curve relationship between long run marginal cost and short run marginal cost these are some probable question and short note sunk cost then short note diagrammatically represents of total fixed cost total variable cost and total cost these are some probable questions any doubt then then today's class is over all the ve uh, 66131 complete thank you thank you ma'am